Okay, guys, so I'm back here. Um, what I've done is I've hit through the coax. I've got some of the shielding here. This is the inner shielding, and that's the business end of the coax. So the way this works is basically you've got that plate there, that face. This pushes down onto that face. Then you have this plastic separator. This is very important because it separates the front part from the other side of the coax. So that's very, very important. And then basically, this is the section where you solder the inner coax. So I've got a pretty big soldering iron. I was able to heat that up and pull that out. It's a little bit blocked up and I actually used, after I heated it up, I used a skewer and just sort of pushed all the way through and that got any debris or extra coax out there. Um, now the thing is that this shielding here, um, if it gets too hot, it'll melt and you've got an issue with the inner and the outer touching. So you don't want a lot of heat uh, on, on this end piece, but um, you, you still definitely need enough to solder this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the um, my pliers as a sink to draw some of the heat away. Um, I'll grab my soldering iron and that switched on here. And... Uh, am I going to do this with, I really need a third hand, is what I really need. Um, what I'll do is I'll just grab that. And um, I'll actually use my assistant here, if you can just grab those pliers and just hold that there. Now what we need to do is just solder the end of that tip. Just get a little bit of heat in it. You remember you want to get the solder and the actual tip that's done there now I'm continuing to use the pliers as a sink as a heat sink because you don't want the inner to melt so I'll just put my soldering iron down in a safe place I'll continue holding that to act as a sink and um, basically come together like that. Now really, the test to make sure that this all works is I've got my multimeter here. And uh, first of all, I wanna make sure there's no short circuit um, between the outer shielding, which is earth, and the inner of the coax. So I've got that and that. It's not beeping. If I touch those together, they beep. That's not beeping. Now to make sure that it's actually all connected, so it's the inner of the plug, that needs to go to the inner of that. So I'm just gonna hold that onto there. And you can see that that's actually continuity. So you know that's soldered to the end. Now, also get the outside shielding and the outside shielding. And if I touch those two, nothing happens. And if I touch these two, nothing happens. So it's gotta be the inner and the inner. Now I know that's true. So that's very important that you do that check because um, if you've short-circuited this out, you will blow up your radio. So now to put this back together, um, basically we have this top section that screws on. And again, the important part of that spacer and washer is to hold the shielding onto the base, uh, onto the earth. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to thread that on and screw that on. Now, to be careful because I reckon we need to screw this at the same time because if we don't, it'll actually twist it and break the um, the coax again. So I'll just twist that at the same time. Make sure this is threaded properly and not off centre. Okay, now that's screwing down. That's not twisting anymore. That's coming up through that. It's perfect. Again, if you want to just make double sure, I'll get my multimeter again, just to make sure that that's true and it's not shooting out, it's shorting out earth, chassis. Okay, so there's nothing going on there. Now, if I grab that inner, which is what we need, that goes to the CB, the UHF. So we know that's perfect. 
So just double check, make sure my work is good. Now, um, I'm going to put my little O-ring. So with the little O-ring for waterproofing, that goes back on, like so. And then you put your little nut back on and snug it up. use the proper tools I've just got this clumsy old spanner it's nice and snug and we know that the aerial will actually go back onto that and fit nicely so um, what we really need to know here is that the way that we put this back together is um, basically the spring um, goes through there with the coax Now this uh, section, you, you probably find there's a little cutout uh, on the base of your, your bull bar. Um, you slide your coax through, then you wind this nut up, and then you snug that up and tighten it up to your bull bar. Now to get this through your firewall, um, obviously this is quite a big um, plug. Um, you may or may not know, but that's that end's actually soldered there. So it's, Basically, you've got to unsolder that and uh, hopefully that's hot enough. Once you've unsoldered it, you can untwist it. And it comes out. So then you can um, pass that through the firewall, um, maybe through one of the other uh, rubbers where loom comes through and uh, you just want to make sure that this is clear oh, now that's blocked up I'm going to use my little skewer trick again assistant can you please push the skewer through that ready set go oh you burnt me <laughs> sorry dad <laughs> here it is so it's nice and clear so then making sure that you've got the thread of the coax um, just put the soldering iron down again. Um, basically, again, you need to keep the shielding, the earth away from the inner core. Uh, basically, what that does is it threads up to about there and hangs out. So you can actually thread that on, screw that on like that. So once you get it through your firewall, you thread that on nice and tight. You've got a little bit of the uh, coax inner coming out like that basically soldered that up and then you know you're true. So um, thanks guys, I, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I know it's a little bit long-winded, but um, as I said, I had a look on YouTube, I couldn't find anything on dismantling a GME UHF base aerial. Um, so I thought I'd put one together to uh, help you guys. Cheers.